something slightly different today that I've kind of discovered recently. It's been a little bit interesting and it's all around line. Now, I've had a little bit of a bugbear where I've had different types of line from just day wear line, um, other types of line braid. And over the last year, I had quite a few knots break off. And I thought this is really annoying. And I've had line break off as well. And I've come back thinking, but that line's 20 pound, that line's 30 pounds or 80 pound breaking strength. It should be holding. Now, somebody said to me, depends on what type of your line, depends what kind of knot you're using. I thought, no, this is ridiculous. This is, I mean, my lots are good. Everything's fine, right? You should be able to hold. Well, I did some testing and I think I'm starting to realize something uh, that I never knew before. And it makes a difference what type of knot you use with what line. And there are some types of knots that you can use on some line that you do not get 100% of your breaking strain on. In fact, your line will snap far earlier. One of them, for example, is fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon quite a bit. This one here is example is 15 pound one. And this is one I've been doing some testing on. And interesting enough, when you've got this 15 pound, at the most, I'm getting about 60% breaking strain. So I've got a bit of a test rig. Here it is set up. Very, very basic, okay? This, is, this isn't very scientific. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on my scales. This is tied or fixed to my chair. <laughs> so this is not gonna break. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the line. Now, what I thought was breaking strain, this should at least hold up to 14 pound, wouldn't it? Of breaking strain. Well, let's do a test and find out. Okay, so here we go, set up now. Very, very basic rig for you. Um, and it, this is just so super simple. So all I've got is just a swivel with my 15 pounds fluorocarbon line, seven times round standard fisherman's knot that we all use to swivels and the rest of it. Okay, so here to prove a point, I'm just going to wrap the round and I'm hopefully, you're going to see okay, so if I turn this okay it's up to five pounds, six pounds seven pounds, eight pounds nearly nine pounds and it's broken so nine pounds is 60% 60, 60 of the breaking strain. This is supposed to be 15 pound line fluorocarbon. But you may turn around and say, oh, well, maybe it was a dodgy knot. Fine, let's do that again. Let's set it up a rig again. So nice big long bit of line, cut it off. Through the knot, one, two, three, four, five, six. Back through there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it back up through the top one to make sure this is extra strong. Okay. a little bit of saliva to smooth it down pull the knot down straight not strong there you go just going to clip that off there going to leave a fair amount at least half a centimeter on the end let's attach it okay get my pulling device So this is brand new fluorocarbon, don't forget. So up to three pound, four pound, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Well, literally just on ten pounds. So that's sixty-five percent braking strain. Let's do it one last time. Okay, it's nice and strong. Ready to go. Hook that up. Okay, you ready? So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, that's about 65, 70% braking strain of that line. So here's my point. Not all knots work for the same type of a line, and I figured this one out. Because no matter what um, fluorocarbon I'm using, I can use all different types of fluorocarbon, but that standard Fishman's knot, I know I'm only gonna get a maximum of 60% braking strain on that line. That knot, for example, I can put a mono line, and I can pretty much get 100%. But the question is why? Is that happening? Now, what I think is happening, you experts out there can tell me, but I'm pretty sure. So fluorocarbon is a lot more brittle, meaning you use it once, you catch a fish once, you might as well good as well throw away that line and start again. Because as you stretch the line, it stretches out everything within a line and then it becomes more brittle and it's more likely to snap the second time around. So therefore, once you've caught a fish on it, or use more than 60% of the braking strain, you're gonna to have to throw it away anyway. So, I don't think fluorocarbon as one line does not like certain types of knots because it remains brittle. And the more you pull it around and the more you tighten that knot, and the more loops there are against the line, the more it makes the line brittle, and therefore it breaks. So therefore, the, fail, the knots are gonna fail. So if you've got a fluorocarbon line, I'm pretty damn sure you're probably not gonna get much more than 60% of the braking strain if you're using a standard Fisherman's knot. The next challenge for me is trying to find out what knot really works for fluorocarbon. But I'm gonna do this test with, with mono anyway, and uh, mono to braid. I wanna test the Alberta knot or bright knot and the, the FG knot, I think that's a pretty good knot, it works well. So I'm gonna test those to work out what the braking strains are, but I think it's useful to know because if we're going out fishing, we can't rely on the fact that 15 pound braking line, it's never gonna fail. But it's not true. As we found out today, 60% of that, if it's braking only at sort of nine, 10 pound, yes, it's a big fish, but you wanna lose a decent fish, do you? Anyway, interesting thoughts. Let me know what you think.